Hello, <laughs> dude. And then in the last episode, we encountered some bullshit, but we're back on it now. I feel bad for you now. Huh? I tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding. Oh, no. It was about ten minutes before Juan's body was discovered. It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet, minding my own business. And... did you tell that to the police? Well, of course. I thought I could get a gift certificate or two out of it. Maybe more. Gift certificate? I've been recruited again for that part of the trial. You know, the trial tomorrow. This time, you're gonna get it. I'm gonna work hard to get my client pronounced guilty. Your client. Your client, excuse me. <laughs> but Mr. Engard hasn't done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I know he did my dear poor Juan in. I just do. That yellow bellied chicken. A yellow bellied chicken? I wonder what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, and I say he did it. What did Mr. Ungard ever do to deserve this? I feel like I changed the voice for her, have I? Yeah, a little bit. You gave her a bit of a southern accent, I think by accident. Mm -hmm. What did Mr. Ungard do to make you so... You don't know. That guy, he framed my horn. He created a scandal that played poor Juan. Mr. Nick. What is it? What's a scandal? Oh, um, I'll tell you about <clears throat> that after we go home, okay? Poor Juan, led straight by the wiles of the vile Tetris. Mr. Nick, what do vials and wild Tetris mean? Arrgh. Um, how about we just listen to what Miss Oldbag has to say for now, okay, Pearls? So, Miss Oldbag, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course, who else? That guy, he shut the girl in the hole on purpose. His own manager? But why? I thought lawyers were smart. Oh, he was to create a scandal to make Juan lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal and dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of scandal to me. Why do you know about that anyway, Miss Oldbag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. Angard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Ugh, of course. A tabloid. <laughs> Next week? Doesn't that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Oldbag have information like that? And where did she get it? He 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 he. Oh boy. Do you hear all that? Yeah. I'm almost curious to see what's going on, but I... I'd rather not get into it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Hee hee hee. Okay. What a bitch. Right. Uh, also, Ben? Give us anything, did it? Uh... I guess none of it. So... Then we could talk to Adrian about it now? Maybe? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe... We can go to Criminal Affairs now? Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Because I, I was like, I was like, why would we be able to go to Andrews when we don't have any more evidence, though? You know? Mm. Nothing got added to the court record. Right. So... Detective Gumshoe said they had an investigation briefing. Yeah... Oh, he's back! Hey, so you came, pal. Why the blunt greeting? Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are airtight. But, but, we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he went to the briefing and then already he's like, yeah, jump a ship, sorry dude, he's guilty. Yeah. Like, damn, Goshu, like... What the fuck? Stick to with us, man. Damn. Right. Chill Although, the fuck out. This guy has something new. Uh oh. That must be one of the detectives. He's been blinking talking to himself. Freeze! Police! Everyone against the wall! Hands where I can see him! Hey, what are you doing, Gun Chew? Their hands, not yours. He must be doing some <laughs> training for reasons. <laughs> what are you doing, Gun Chew? Their hands, not yours. Right, right. Jeez. Uh So what do you mean by the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. Two? And both of them are in this photo. 
The first is a button that's missing from the victim's chest. Hmm, that's the button you found during your body search of Mr. On Guard. Yep, I found it in the folds of the Nickel Samurai Special Pants. Um, uh, and the second one is... <laughs> the knife in his chest, pal. The fingerprints on the knife in his chest, to be exact. Fingerprints? Um, whose are they? You didn't even have to ask them, Missy. It's obvious. They're mad and guards. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. So what about this airtight testimony? It's an old security lady, Miss Old Bag. Yeah, I thought so. What do you mean, you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? Um, well... And I even told her not to open that mouth of hers and blab to anyone. Her blab knob is stuck on ten, and there's no turning it down. Trust me. <laughs> I don't know why, but that feels really weird. To, to say it like that. I don't know. Blab knob. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> this feels wrong. <laughs> Yeah, well, Miss Oldback saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. Ungar come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. No way! Okay, but she also said that she saw Will Powers when she really just saw someone wearing a costume. So it could be the same thing where someone... It's probably what it is. Yeah. Alright, time to do the whole... Present everything and see what causes a trigger. Well, try the new thing. That's probably... The, like, the note in the new thing. That's all we got new, so... We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal with Miss Corda? With Mr... I don't know why... With Mr. Corda, but why? Well, two years ago... A woman committed suicide. Suicide? Her name was Celeste Impax. And she was Juan Corrida's manager. The victim's manager? But that's not all, pal. Miss Impacts was Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Her mentor? A woman who was both Miss Corrida's man- Mr. Why do I keep saying Mrs.? Mr. Corrida's manager and Miss Andrews' mentor. Could her suicide have something to do with this case? You want to know more about her, pal? Uh... Yeah. She was a victim's manager and, he was, and was also Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. It's been two years since her suicide, and now those two are linked again by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence? But. Ah! Well. I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. Miss Von Karma? Miss Von Karma. You can't oh, wait, seem to stop allying yourself with the your enemy, can you? You don't need it. I don't need a traitor in my midst. You, 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 you don't, you, you don't mean. I do, Scruffy. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You are no longer needed. Goodbye. Th th that's well, wait, please wait, sir. If I don't get this month's pay, I'll stop. Quiet. If it's points for traitors like you, I would have won. Is that what you wanted to say? Who? That voice. Edgeworth! It's been a long time, right? The, this person! This is Mr. Edgeworth?! What am I going to do with you? Still let me know there is when things go wrong. You haven't changed a bit, Francisca. Y you... How dare you show your face to me without a shred of shame upon it! You soiled Von Karma the name, dragged it through the mud. You even ran away with your tail between the legs like the ill-bred dog you are. Are you talking about the Von Karma family greed? To be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Franziska. How are things going? I hear you are having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. Y you You seem to be getting crushed from the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I... I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never! Mr. Phoenix Wright, I will see you tomorrow. In court. It will be a critical lesson 
on the meaning of total victory. I thought we were kind of fucked up our voice. <laughs> That's all right. You 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 got Edgeworth back, and then you're like, oh, Edgeworth, oh, other prosecutor. Uh, yeah, um, right. uh, yeah. <laughs> Still the same wild mare she always was. All right, Edgeworth is back. I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick! I I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. Are you going to run tomorrow's trial? You heard her, right? The wild mayor hasn't given in yet, it seems. So, no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hate for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. Yeah, Phoenix, like, they were getting along so well in the last case. Why does Phoenix just fucking hate him all of a sudden? Well, because he, like, left and, like, made it sound like he died. He was like, he was like, Edgeworth, we were friends, and then you went and, like, fucking killed yourself? But wait, you're not actually dead? <laughs> well, that's just because you're fucking stupid. Like, <laughs> literally everybody else is like, dude, calm the fuck down. He's not dead. Stop telling him he's dead. Yeah. Stop telling everybody else he's dead. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own at the trial tomorrow. What is that supposed to mean? I have something definitive that you lack. And working together is the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you are feeling the need for my assistance, it is available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I could be a bit more generous with information. Hey, remember what, Holy shit. <laughs> remember what you're talking about? It's Phoenix and Edward working together to find the big bad uh, killer? Yeah! This is exactly what's happening. Yeah! Yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so happy right now. Yeah. <laughs> Just what is going on inside his head? He's here to help you, you fucking dumbass! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Are you uh, really gonna look at a gift horse in the mouth? Right. Ah, Phoenix! <laughs> what does he mean? Why is he here? I thought he was dead! He's not dead. You're stupid. He's here to help you. Uh. A lot of things may have happened. However, Man from Von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect win record is proof of a Von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? To think that your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It'd have been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. I see. Then let me ask you something. Why did you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Well, with Francisca, she almost always says... I will defeat you this time. The instant she sees me. The in... Yeah, what the, Okay, listen, you get... You, I the, will defeat you this time. The instant she sees me. They really they really should have separated that, but whatever. But, the courtroom is not a... It's not a professional battlefield for, for, for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client. To save their lives. To save your client, you say? Those who think they're only their own ego-driven goals. Those kind of prosecutors are... A, are reprehensible to me. Even if you're a prodigy, or someone like you, Edgeworth. It looks like there's still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I've yet to learn? Me? <laughs> well, that's enough for now. The time when you will see is coming soon enough. Alright, well... It sounds like he's about to infect Phoenix with some sort of, like, eldritch corruption or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah, although I... <laughs> I do like how uh, how much more confident Edward is. I mean, I mean, he was confident before, but like this is a like a different a kind positive, of positive, yeah, like, confidence instead of like the weird like edgy, you know, mm -hmm. stuff it was before. Right, right. It's like a. And it's good to see him like have almost like a turn of character. Yeah. I have no interest in. Oh, oh sorry. It's it fine. In talking about useless evidence, put a little more thought into what you show me, Phoenix Wright. So I'll stack up as ever. Okay. Phoenix, why are you so angry at him? Like, calm the fuck down, dude. <laughs> You're fucking stupid. Right. This is definitely not as stuck up as ever. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a little sassy, but like, 
He's blunt. He gets to the point. Right. Uh, oh, wait. We're looking into leads, but we can only look into a few key players with our limited resources. There's no reason for us to waste our energy investigating this person. Why don't you just tell me straight and say I don't have any info? He's helping you! <laughs> right. He's like, hey, uh, he makes a very good point that we don't, we have limited resources. We should, we don't need to investigate this person, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> ah! Where are you going? I got I really gotta fucking pee. So oh, well, all right. right. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll do, well, wait, what if I get something while you're gone? Then pause, I guess. I'll just or pause. Okay. I'll just pause right now. And we're back. I shouldn't say your memes, but just the memes currently. Johnny. You can't continue a conversation we had off camera back into on camera. No one's gonna know what we're talking about. Well, too bad for them. But uh, what I said is true. Your memes are fucking stupid. Your sometimes. memes are fucking stupid. And they're not even your memes, just some of the current ones. Ah, whatever. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, There's an interesting rumor, about, interesting rumor about this man. You mean the one about Miss Andrews getting close to him? But is that's pretty common. Uh, that's pretty common tabloid fare, isn't it? I don't take things at face value when there's more to be found. So he believes it. I, I guess, yeah. He <laughs> believes that there's something else to support him. Hmm. While I was abroad, these deplorable types of actors became popular. I take it. Well, refreshing like a spring breeze is his motto. Refreshing? And what is so refreshing about a spring breeze? Sounds like the pollen has not treated him well this year. The fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Is that some sort of weird thing to say that he's got allergies, I guess? I, I guess, yeah. And it's so, like, dude, why are you picking on a guy with allergies? What the fuck? <laughs> uh. it, honestly, it seems like Phoenix is just trying to be find any excuse to be mad at him at this point. I, mean, I don't get why. That, that, I think that is what he's doing, and I think it's just because he's grumpy about him pretending to be dead. Or not even pretending to be he's dead. He's not even pretending. He didn't even, like, everybody fucking knew. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Maybe it's, I mean, I, I guess because he didn't tell Gumshoe to, you know, or anything to tell him. But then again, like, I just, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure Phoenix came to the conclusion that Ed was dead. He left a note that said, Ed, Miles Edward chooses death. Right, but I, the fact that he took it at face value, knowing who Edgeworth is. Mm. I, uh, <laughs> Adrian Andrews. She still holds a large secret within herself. A secret? Is it the kind of secret that, you know, uh, such as like a recording secret that you shouldn't eat while recording? Or especially, especially when you have voice lines to do? <laughs> you can't help but feel that this whole case revolves around her. Hmm. This woman is another key to solving this case. Do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago, but she was suddenly called away by a different show and became Juan Corrida's manager. And then, a few months later, Celeste Impacts died. But her death was ruled a suicide, right? Yes. But there's still one riddle we've yet to solve. A riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished, huh? That's weird. Yeah. But I mean, I, I also, I can't imagine it's like uncommon to, for some people to commit suicide to just not have one. Right? Well, the, to say it went missing implies that there was one found that could no longer be found. Weird. Okay, wait, hold on. What if I present? Because I have a new thing. Uh, well, I guess I have two new things. But you don't know anything about it, Boris, because why would you? Ooh. Mr. Eating while recording. Um, what's wrong? How much do you know? What do you mean, how much? Mr. Lawyer, I may be your client, but I hope you would keep yourself out of my personal life. Uh, no, I would, I would never. Now, if you'll excuse me. I have a lunch appointment I have to keep. 
You're in detention. Who in the world are you going to eat with? The security guard? Mr. Nick? The Celeste Impacts lady. Somehow I get the feeling she's a very important person in all this. Damn. Oh yeah, he's just gone now. Alright, well... <laughs> nope. Nope. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Oh shit. Hmm. Looks like Miss Andrews isn't here. That's not good. I still have a few questions I want to ask her. But she has that psych lock on her heart, right? Well, we don't have much of a choice, I guess. We'll have to come back later. Well, uh... Yeah, that's to get the plates, because they're weird, apparently. Right? Is that what he said last time? Yes. Oh, there's nothing new. Okay. That's actually what I was going to do, though. I was going to try recycle locks now that we have this new info. Hmm. But... Well, uh... Shit. Talk to her about something? Nope. Nope. Oops. We still haven't talked to Goshu, have we? Well, he was here, but then he got replaced with Edgeworth. Mm. Oh, uh... Oh. That's... Okay, I guess we just... Is that relevant? I guess. Alright. Miss Intax's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there was no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police begin to suspect that someone had hidden it. The suicide note? But how do you know Miss Impacts even had written on such a note? There was no solid evidence, however. We did find traces of ink on her right index finger. Which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Warren Corrida himself. The, the victim? He was the one who found her body. Which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. It feels nice to be able to do this in my regular voice again. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Corda hit his own manager's suicide note? But why? As long as I know it is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report. Part one, anyway. Part one? Okay, well... Because we're supposed to go look that over? Uh, I can't. Oh, okay. But maybe for the talk to him. I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all are the reports that have multiple parts like that one. That has two. Two parts? What you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here's the second part. Let me get this straight. You handed me part one... And then, to get part two, I just had to give you part one back to you, immediately afterwards. <laughs> Were we supposed to look it over to read it out loud to him because he had not read it? I don't know! It wouldn't let me check it. I am very confused. I mean, I guess all the information we needed was right there in the little, that little bit, I guess. I guess! So what, do we just save that to the memory bank? We got that now, let's go! I guess! Like, just fucking... Why is it in two parts? I don't know! I... And why didn't you just hand us both parts to begin with? Like, like, why, like, why hand us one just for us to hand you it back? Right. The one you just handed me? You mean the one you just handed me? Yes. That's part one of two. Jeez Louise. What I don't understand... Why... I mean... Why is it in two parts, though? Like, I understand not liking reports, liking suicide reports even less, not wanting to read it or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what, fine, but just say that. Yeah. Say that you don't know what's inside of it. Or, if he does know what's inside of it, why is he being weird about it? I don't know, man. <laughs> I, whatever. 
the second part of the report is about a attempted suicide. The attempted suicide, the attempter's name is Adrian Andrews. Miss Andrews? Um, what did she do? She, she tried to kill herself? She doesn't even seem like the kind of person to try to kill herself, though. You think she's a strong career woman? That's just what she wants you to think. Adrian Andrews. She has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her dependent nature. It's what she really it's what she's really like on the inside. Miss Andrews? Dependent? Talk about the exact opposite of what uh, the woman is. How does that even work? Wow. Oh, oh. I guess we'll find out. Oh, the, the new thing is on the top. Okay. That's... What? Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> what is... What's this about Miss Andrews having a dependent nature? Adrian Andrews' attempted suicide was a few days after the death of Celeste Impacts. And? And why did Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? Because she had apparently lost her will to live. Lost her will? Well, why would she... Her pillar of strength, her mentor Celeste Impacts, was gone forever. That's why. Why would that... Pardon me for a second, I'm gonna interrupt. What pun is there in Celeste Impacts? I don't think there is one. I think some of them might not be puns. Most of them are, though. Or, like, I mean... Like, Adrian Andrews doesn't really seem like a pun either. I guess, it just... I don't know. There's a lot of them that... I guess the key characters are the ones that are puns or funny, I guess, and all the rest of them are just kind of... there. Uh... I don't know. I mean, that's kind of what it seems like. Is this what they call following someone to give... Is that what they call following someone to the grave? After her attempt suicide. Adrian Andrews started attending counseling lessons. She is someone who needs a person to whom she can trust absolutely. And once she finds that person, she'll do anything she can to keep them near. Without such an anchor in her life, her crippling anxiety stifles her ability to live. Holy shit. Mm. And that's... That's the nature of her dependency on others? Pressing the wrong button, my bad. <laughs> when Celeste Impact suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. That's according to Andrea Andrews herself. Then that means her super competent attitude. It's all a facade. She's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. How terrible. Holy shit. Mm hmm. Appearances can be deceiving. It's such a cliché saying, but it's cliché because it's true. Miss Andrews. That's me. Oh. Miss Andrews. You think that behind that unwavering brave front, she's been hiding this weakness and fear. Okay, well, I think that's everything I could have gotten. Oops. Uh, anything new yet? Present this? Like this. No. Okay, next up is... I think this is something we have to talk to Adrian about. Well, yeah, but Adrian's not there unless she came back. Maybe she did. Well, let's take a look. That's not where I meant to go. Well, well, well. <laughs> what do you know? Oh, Miss Andrews is here. But it looks like she's talking with someone. That's Francisca von Karma? Yes, von Karma. What are you doing here? Um, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around. Following you? Th th that's you, Miss von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Pearls. You always follow after the Mr. Detective with the little beard. Me? Following after Scruffy? Don't make me laugh. Let me show you something interesting, little girl. What is that? 
An electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. And with this, I know that fool's every move. So that noise we heard was this receiver. I feel at least sorry for before to take a gun to now. Now then, let's stop wasting time. Adrian Andrews. Y yes Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, all right. What else are you talking about? Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? The fuck? Um, I'd like to ask you about this. I told you, I hate traveling matters. Oh, I'm just their normal. Huh. I guess we gotta... Well, we present the other one. I, I think we need to present it when we do her side clock. Oh. Oh, okay. <sighs> oh, wait. Shit, hold on. <laughs> we'll do the side clock in the next episode. I just realized the time. Oh, shit. Okay. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.